Greetings. This is a brief description of the Eclipse reporting tool, which is the easiest uh, reporting tool in all of Eclipse to work with. As mentioned in previous videos, there is um, there are a lot of reports in Eclipse. A lot. Uh, there's, I guarantee, if there's anything you can think of, they've already got a predefined report that does it. Plus, uh, if they don't, then there's several reporting tools that can be used. I've lost count now uh, of the different reporting tools there. I think there's five in all told. Anyway, this was the quickest, easiest, downest, and dirtiest one uh, for mere mortals to be able to work with, and so this is what we'll show. So from the solar menu, I select reports here, and the first one off the list here is Eclipse Reports. This is a web browser based tool, so it will pop up in your web browser. Um, if you have logged in uh, recently, it'll pop back in, otherwise it may just uh, ask you for a login. This is going to be the same login that you used to log in to Eclipse in the first place. So if you get that, just put in that. All right, this tool is pretty simple, pretty powerful, but it does have some substantial limitations. Uh, sometimes the information can be a little misleading because it's presenting you with things that aren't what you think they are, um, at least on the accounting side of things. And um, it does have uh, some li limitations on how many records. Uh, it was really designed to only create spreadsheets of 10,000 or less rows. It can be tweaked to do more. You really don't want to. Uh, just do quick, dirty, fairly short reports with this tool and everything will be happy and wonderful. Uh, this also is uh, really the only reporting tool that Eclipse has that actually will uh, generate right in uh, to an Eclipse file. It does it in a really hokey manner using something called an iQuery link, which is ancient mm, 80s, 90s technology, but it does work. Anyway, uh, you can see here um, what you do is you create a report template that's reusable. Under this tab, reports here are reports that have already been run, uh, which you can delete when they're done. I think it does do a self cleanup of like every couple of months, it'll wipe out all but the last 10 or so. I honestly don't quite remember, uh, but it's always good to do housekeeping and you know clean up your stuff just like the whole file in Eclipse. Uh, administration function, don't worry about that. So what you normally do is you create a template that you reuse. Uh, it also has a scheduler built in so you can schedule the ports, uh, reports to rerun on a regular basis. You can have it sent to multiple people. Uh, it can be emailed out of the system. And um, you can also share a report template that you've created with other people, or keep them private, um, so that they can run the report at will as they need to as well. Keep in mind, though, this report tool is a little goofy sometimes. So the more exotic and creative you get, the more likely it's not going to behave right. Um, so simple, simple is the rule. Um, I know, uh, you know, this is 21st century. You're used to how 21st century works and it's drop dead reliability and that type of stuff. This is not that kind of thing. It's, uh, as I said, a little goofy foot at times. Anyway, to uh, create a report is fairly simple. You go here and you create one. You give it a a title. Um, well. You have to select a category here. There's a uh, this is pulling out select um, attribute fields out of uh, one of the Eclipse uh, files. Um, if you're not familiar with Rocket Universe database terminology, uh, think Excel, where a file would be a a tab on a spreadsheet or a table. Uh, an attribute would be a field uh, or column. Uh, and that's that's not 100% accurate, but that's close enough to get you where you wanted to. So, anyway, so uh, I would perhaps want um, uh, product information uh, that I'd be wanting to uh, create a report on. So I'd select products. Uh, I'd select the uh, particular source. 
uh, general product information is uh, fairly static information and and then there's other stuff that's more dynamic um, say for instance I want product information location uh, on locations excuse me um, this is uh, in the Eclipse table I believe it's called prod dynam uh, for anyone who cares uh, anyway we do that uh, give it a title give it a description if necessary it defaults to private I don't know why uh, in this case you know we we, uh, we will not make it private and uh, here at the creation of the report you can assign other people to be able to access that template and reuse it um, just uh, type in the uh, username of the user you want to save it to and and it will show up. You can also add to this or change it later. Okay, so we're gonna next. Mm, we're gonna go ahead and leave these defaults here. That's all wonderful. Um, I'm not gonna do any scheduling here, so I'm gonna skip over this. But as I said, you can you can run these things on a schedule. Once again, keep in mind, don't get too creative. The schedule can sometimes get a little goofy, especially if you're scheduling something that's a very large file that is going to be emailed out. That seems to be where it gets the quirkiest. Anyway, so we're going to finish it. The report tool is going to give you an example of a, a, few, a few records. So you have some idea of how things are going to look in the report. You can grab these columns and rearrange them a little bit, but you know don't uh, don't don't get too strange with it, or else um, it may give some erratic behavior. You can add some different uh, additional fields of information. Uh, in here, it's got in a folder. This is the static product information, I believe. Yeah. So if you want to pick keywords. Uh, last purchase order date, uh, open POs, that type of stuff. That would show up here. Uh, if you want rel warehouse relevant information, okay, it's going to be branch and location, location status, location type. Uh, you get the idea here. If you don't see it on this list, you can't create it and you can't use it. Um, but it gives you access to most of the basic information with with a fair minimum of fuss. Okay, now uh, once you've got the basic uh, table attributes fields that you that you wanted, then you can go ahead and do some selection prompts and filters. Um, there's no selection prompts that we need. We're going to add a filter so. These filters are very powerful, very simple, but once again, don't expect anything really exotic. This is not complex programming here. If you want to do really complex stuff, then uh, go into eTerm and use the report writer in there, uh, if you dare. So, say in this filter here, we just want a report that's just going to give us information on branch 2. Um, and we're going to say branch 2, or uh, branch equals two all right and now uh, we've get it, given this set of filter parameters so it's going to filter out all the branches and that's good at this point we would go ahead and save our report and as I said you can program a schedule if you want this time we're just going to do a quick run so go ahead and run this You'll pop back to the home screen and over here in running reports, you should see it pop up here shortly as it's submitted to the Phantom for running and completion. And there we go, it's completed. And if you're in, if you're in solar, you should get a message from the Phantom that the report completed too. Um, although it's showing off the screen right now, but it did do that. All right. Now, in order to get your report to view it, uh, you're going to have to do the export. Now this, as I said, is kind of a strange thing in that it shows uh, uh, iQuery links. 
So in order to download this report, you click on the Excel iQuery link here. It's going to give you a warning, blah, 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 may truncate if less than 10, uh, more than 10,000 rows. You tell it OK. And uh, you may have uh, your browser set up with a pop-up blocker, because this is a, a pop-up uh, screen that happens. You'll get a little warning up here. If so, unblock that particular pop-up uh, so that the application will continue to work correctly. So we do OK. As we see uh, up here, we did get a pop-up block. So let's go ahead and unblock that. And we're going to always allow. OK, done. Now we're going to do it again. And this time it should work. All right, so the pop-up uh, blocker didn't block this time. And we've downloaded our iQuery file. Uh, go ahead and show this in the folder. Now, iQuery is, uh, honestly, I don't even remember how this thing worked. It's, uh, it's so long ago when this thing was written. This is the only tool I've seen in two decades that used it. But essentially, you can see it's 1K in length. This is not your data. This is a symbolic link that, that uh, when Excel opens up, tells it how to, how to contact the server where the data is at and, ex and extract the data into Excel. So we go ahead and click on that twice. That will activate Excel. It will usually give you a nasty gram warning that this is a, a, a script that's running, potentially harmful. Yes, tell it enable. And then you'll, it'll pause for a moment and it will give you a report. Right now Excel is drifting off the screen size here. So let me see if I can shrink it down a little bit. Uh, damn it. That's being a usual nuisance self. All right. Uh, yeah, there we go. Get a little bit closer there. There we are. OK, so here we have our report. And uh, add ID, you can ignore. Your product ID is the Eclipse record ID. There's your description. Here are all the items for the branch. Here's the quantity of the items in that, in that warehouse branch. Here's their locations. Here's their value. Sometimes it will add some straggler fields that you didn't ask for, but it did anyway for some strange reason. When I asked for location, it decided to add this location field in here, a location info field in here as well. I don't know why it does that, but just ignore it or cut it off later. And that is basically how you use the Eclipse Reports tool. So you can see, very powerful, but don't expect miracles out of it. And sometimes it is a little slightly quirky. Now I have created a, let me, let me show another template here that's a little bit more sophisticated. So I've created a report here called, uh, this is Priceline Quantity Location Branch 2. Um, it should also be mentioned that once you create reports, you can create all kinds of variants just by opening up a template and telling it copy and giving it a new name. And then you can make multiple copies or delete ones that no longer apply anymore. So let's go ahead and look at this template here. And here I've added uh, the price line field here. Uh, you have to look into uh, a product record and figure out what price line in order to, to filter by the right price line. So keep that in mind. But this was designed to give a, give a report of everything uh, in branch two that's of a particular price line. Um, no selection prompts. Here's the filters. In this case, price line equals square D, branch equals two. On hand is everything greater than zero because I don't give a shit about anything I don't actually have. All right. If you wish to run this report for a different price line, then you would put the price line in there. In this case, if I wanted to run it as Leviton, if I pull up a record in Eclipse, to find out what the price line for Leviton is, say, oh, I go maintenance product. Um, okay. Um, all right. 
got that. Uh, what would be a Leviton product? A 78 something? I don't know. Oh, here we are. Oh, I can see right off the bat. All right. So, in this case, if I pull up an example record for a Leviton item, we see here the price line in our system is Lev. So that exactly, case sensitive, is what I'm going to type into the report writer to filter it by just Leviton products. Then I would go ahead and click Save, click Run, do the export, and I would have that report exactly as I needed. Um, there are, as I said, sometimes there's uh, parameters you want to change here. So um, if you take a look at the properties, say I want to uh, have someone else uh, be able to access this, I can make it not make it private anymore, or I can change the description or stranger title and add a couple of other people that I want to be able to access the report. And then back to home and we're done. So that is a quick and dirty of how to use Eclipse reports. You can find all kinds of clever variants and such. Uh, as I said, this is just the simplest tool. It's easiest to work with. And so this is uh, the information I give for, for mere mortals to be able to do some quick and dirty reports and share them amongst themselves. Uh, thank you for your attention. I hope this helped.